this time you're going to begin to worship and praise the Lord for he has been good. Amen. Amen. And we all need him. Amen. Amen. Here right now. Hallelujah. Put your hands together like this. Yeah. 
creation, Lord, and allowing us to be in the land of the living this morning, Father God. We thank you for your grace, your love, and your mercy, Lord Jesus. We thank you, God, for meeting us where we are right now, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, God, for the outstretched hands of your love, of your grace, of your mercy. Father God, I ask right now that you will decrease our flesh, Lord Jesus. Decrease everything in us that is unlike you, Father God. And replace it with your Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus. Let us have more joy, more love, God, more peace. Let us embody the fruits of the Spirit every single day of our lives, God. We thank you, God. And I ask that as the word comes forth, Lord Jesus, that it will fall on good soil, Lord Jesus. That our hearts will be ready, God. That our minds will be ready, Lord Jesus, to receive your word. To receive your word. We thank you, thank God. You. In Jesus' name we Jesus. pray.
short of anything. He's a God that can do all things but fail. Amen. Amen. So don't take it back. Give it to him. Yes, he can do more wicked than we can.
let the servant die like our God. You woke us up this morning. You still clothed in our right mind. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning with my body faith family to be in the land of the living. Almost since the seventh month of the year, having God been good to us. Just real quick, can we all just stand to our feet really quick? Really quick, really quick, really quick. What a privilege and an honor to worship at your throne. To be called into your presence as your own. Come on, we know it. You are holy. Oh, so holy. You are holy. You are holy. Come on. Oh, so holy. What a privilege and an honor. What a privilege and an honor to worship at, worship at your throne. To be called, to be called into your presence as your own. Call him faithful. You are faithful. You are faithful. Father God, as we hear your word today, Father God, we ask you, Lord, to change our hearts, to change our minds, Father God, because there's none righteous, none faithful, none holy but you, Father God. In our sin, Father God, you forgave us. Lord, you gave us an opportunity, Father God, to serve you, to have life and have it more abundantly. Through your son, Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. 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 I am, I don't take it lightly every time I have the opportunity to share the word of God, yes. to preach the word of God. Yes. It's always an honor. I believe in my life, it's the highest honor I have is to share the word of God with you. I believe that when God calls anyone, I don't care who you are, when he call you to ministry, your whole goal is to share the word of God. And from Genesis to Revelation, um, sometimes it's not a matter of, you know, you, you don't like, uh, well, let me say this, your flesh always don't like everything the word of God says, Amen. right? Amen. But it is the word of God. Amen. It, has the, uh, it, it has the power to save your soul. That's, that's what the Bible says. It says, receive with meekness the implanted word of God that is able to save your soul. Today I want to talk about forgiveness. My, 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 my topic today is forgiveness. Um, I would like to honor Pastor Court in his absence today in his beautiful family. I must keep him in our prayers as he is traveling today. Uh, Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. When you have it said, that's old school church, when you have it said, man. <laughs> you know, growing up, growing up, growing up in church, you know, I would hear the pastor say, uh, he or she would say, as I was studying last night. Say, I always wanted to say that as I was studying last night. <laughs> That's old school church. Amen. Now, throughout my encouragement, my exhortation, today I'm going to use several different scriptures, but this is our, our main focus today is, is Matthew chapter 18. 
chapter 18. Starting at verse 21. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Uh, Peter wanted a cheap way out. Seven times. You got seven times to offend me. That's all. Is that it, Jesus? <laughs> Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. But as he was not able to pay his master, commanded that he be sold with his wife, his children, and all that he had, and that payment be made. The servant therefore fell down before him saying, Master, have patience with me. I will pay you all. Then the master of the servant was moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him the debt. But the servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And he laid hands on him and took him by his, choked the man out, took him by his throat, <laughs> took him by his throat, and said, Brother, pay me what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. And he would not, but went and threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. Now that didn't make much sense. You want me to pay the debt, and you're going to throw me in prison. Brother, how you going to get your money? I don't, you're not going to get your money, brother. <laughs> so when his fellow servants saw what had been done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. Then his master, as he had called him, said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me, you pleaded with me, you, you cried because you owed me so much money and I was calling my accounts and you came and beg and cried and I forgave you. Then his master, as he had called him, said to him, I'm sorry, verse 33, should you not also have done uh, had compassion on your fellow servant just as I had pity on you and his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due him so my heavenly father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses I did a little bit of research and there's no definitive answer about the the, 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 the money value here. But one, 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 one translation I found is that the servant owed the king $85,000. He said, I tell you what, man, I, I'll wipe you clean up your debt. He went and found somebody that owed him $5,000 and threw him in prison for a $5,000 debt. But he owed the king $85,000. The king here is a person in authority. It takes a person in authority to grant forgiveness. Uh, and, and, and in the United States, the only person who could, can, can grant forgiveness in a federal crime after you've been convicted of a felony is the president of the United States. But see, this is the thing. <laughs> now, this is the thing now. I did just a tad bit of research. There are times before the president pardon you, you must pay a portion of your sentence. There are times even after he pardoned you, right? He, he, he may pardon you, but then all your civil rights are not restored to you. And the only time that you are found guiltless and set free completely is if the federal law can say, you know what, I, I think we might have made a mistake. You're not even guilty of this crime. When we get to state law, the only person who can pardon you from a felony is the governor and his cabinet. And the same rules apply, you know, if I'm looking at this crime, right, maybe you did it, whatever happened in the case, right, I'm, I'm looking at you and, and I'm saying, I don't know, maybe you did do it. So there's a level of forgiveness, but not always 100%. The only time that there is 100% forgiveness is when I can, the state can look and say, you know what, maybe we, we did something wrong. I don't think this is our person. 
This is the thing about our Lord and Savior, the Almighty One. We all are guilty. You don't have to ask yourself if I'm guilty. No, nah, brother, sister, you guilty. You, 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 you guilty. Uh, so, in, in in our parable here, the king is God, and we know that it takes a person in authority to give grant a full pardon. Right? Sometimes this person in authority, in the case of the president of the uh, or government, they speak for all society. Right? That the person who committed a crime didn't do anything to me necessarily, but they sinned against society. God is able to hold this position because He is the authority in all of heaven. When we when we when we look at heaven, oftentimes, often people, I would say, there's this thought that heaven is far above the clouds. Even if you had a spaceship that can go as far as your mind could imagine, you wouldn't find God. God resides and his throne is in the spiritual realm. All right. This is where the seat of every single one of us reside. Right. This is where our emotions are. The, the, have you ever walked into a room and you say, oh man, something don't feel right in here. Yeah. Every, everything could be going fine. Everybody could be being cordial. But it's something, right? about the spirit of the room yeah. that doesn't feel right. This is where God, this, this, this is where heaven is, in the spiritual realm. This is where God's authority is, is in the spiritual realm, right? Uh -huh. I know in today's, the, the, today world, we call it, oh, the energy off. Nah, it's called the spirit, right? That's, that's what it's called. Oh, man, your energy off, man, your spirit off, man. Something ain't right about you. So it made me ask this question, who is God? Who is God? Who is this? Who is who is this king who can pardon me of all my wrongdoing? Exodus three fourteen. God have called Moses. Moses is having this conversation with God, and Moses say, uh, "God, uh, just got a real quick question. Who, uh, you know, who do I say sent me to bring the children of Israel out of captivity?" Exodus three fourteen. God says, "I am." That I am. In the Hebrew, he says, Ahie, Asher, Ahie. Ahie mean I am, to be, self sufficient, self existent, and immediate presence. See, the thing about the presence of God is, is it's not about a feeling, it's not about your emotions. I, I was telling this to my mom the other day. Um, I grew up in church and I, I always thought, I was like, when the Lord called me, I'm gonna like be at the altar. And I'm going to feel like this miraculous power of God. My life will change. I'm going to be a brand new man. And I waited for that moment for a long, long time. And I'm going to tell you, it never happened. But I'll never forget when I was 18. I graduated in 2011. My, my first Bible I ever bought myself was a King James Version, Thomas Nelson. And um, 2012, so by the time I was about 19. But when I sat down and I started to read the Word of God, with a dictionary, my life changed. Now, 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 there were moments where God was calling my car, and I was like, wait a minute, brother. You can leave that area of my life alone, pop. Now, I got that part. I don't need your help on that. There were times I remember sitting in my office. I didn't like what the Bible was saying so much. I would get up and close my door as if the sentence was going to change when I came back and read it again. It does, he doesn't change. Uh -huh. This is the thing that makes him fair. Yeah. It, it, he, he, trans, he, he have transcended time and ages, right? He's not concerned with what culture says is right or wrong. This, this is not God's concern. His concern is his word. The, 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 this is the standard, right? This is the, for over 7,000 years it have been the standard. If God held the children of Israel accountable, if God held his disciples and kings and prophets, if God held them, held them accountable at his word, why would he change it for us now? Right. It don't matter. It ain't always comfortable. Everybody ain't going to like it. But this is what makes him God. Listen to this. God's existence is not contingent upon anyone else. His plans are not contingent upon any circumstances. He promises that he will be what he will be. 
that he will be the eternal constant God. He stands ever present and unchangeable, completely sufficient in himself to do what he wills and to accomplish what he wills to accomplish. God's name is Yahweh, which simply means he exists. What more can be said about him? That nothing more needs to be said. The Bible says that everything that was made was made by him and for him and for his will, including me and you. There, listen, listen, there, there, there are times, there are times when we talk about the one who's able to pardon us of our sins. There are times, not, this is not to point out any flaw in our justice system. This, this is not that. But there are times because of who you are, who you know, and how much money you have, you get to slide right on through, right? Don't you? That's just the reality of it. Listen, listen, let, 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 let me be clear. And this is not a, a, a political ploy, this next statement. Because of Donald Trump, because of who he is, he's able to, I tell you what, you don't pay your taxes then. Try it. Why don't you try it? Why don't you try it out? See how it, go, it ain't going to go so well for you. It's not going to, even to the point, there was a, there was a situation um, a few years ago where this boy was caught in the very act of uh, 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 violating a young lady behind a dumpster. His plea to the judge was, oh, you're going to ruin a, boy, a, a, a boy's life? See, everybody ain't getting that treatment because he didn't do not one, one bit of time in prison, not one bit, wow. right? So because who you know, all right, who you are and the money you have, sometimes even in our system, right? Yeah. Now, now, not because the system is flawed, because people are flawed. Oh. Oh, oh, you see, you know my son coming through there, you know, that's, that's the reality of the world we live in. I see, uh, not with God. <laughs> he don't care who you know. He don't care how much money you have. He don't care who you are. The Bible says he have no respect of person, right? If, if, listen to this, listen to this. If God would chastise David, his kid, a man after okay. God's own heart. Okay. Come on now. If he would call him, right, and say, listen, David, brother, listen, li listen, 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 David, you took this man's wife. Yeah. Not only did you take his wife, but then you murdered him. Yeah. If he would call his own king to the rug, yeah. if he would require, you, you, you remember the prophet, he said, uh, you, you know, you, you, you know, uh, the, 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 the opposing king comes to him and says, hey, curse these people, right? Because these are great people. And if they come up against me, they're going to kill me. The, the man of God say, oh, okay, but listen, I only can really prophesy what God tell me, but since you go write me a check, I'm going to go try to curse him, right? The brother tried. He, he, he tried. He, he, he tried. It just didn't work out. But see, this is the thing. God didn't care. From that point on in scripture, he is referred to a prophet who prophesied for money, right? God have no respect to person. So it is God in the parable who had the ability to pardon you of your sins. Uh, the Bible says this, for the Lord, your God, is Lord of Lords, the great and mighty and awesome who shows no partiality or takes or, nor takes a bribe. Listen, the penalty of sin is death, yeah. but the free gift of God is eternal life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, listen, listen. God is not, the, the Bible says that God, it, it, he does not delight in the destruction of the wicked. But what? That the wicked should turn and live. This is his plea with Israel. Israel, why should you die? Why, why, why are you going to die? I want you to turn from your ways and what? Live. This is the king who was able to forgive his servant. Uh, but the king, but, but the servant, I'm sorry. This is the thing. The servant forgot that his sins were forgiven. Oh, come on. He forgot that somebody gave him grace. Come on now. Right? He, 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 he forgot that he was living in sin and debt and somebody forgave him. When God give us grace and he give us mercy, it is our job to extend that to our brothers and our sisters. Now, this, this, this go beyond the four walls. 
Everybody in the world don't believe the way you do. Everybody who come to church don't believe the way you do. Everybody who come to church on Sunday, they don't believe the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. I'm going to take this part, right? I like this part. Oh, this for me. I don't like this part. God knows. Wait. Everybody under the sound of my voice. God not concerned with what, what part you don't like. The Bible says what? He disciplined us. He said if you had fathers who disciplined you for their good, right? When growing up, we, we disciplined our children sometimes because you ain't going to be embarrassing me. That's for my good. You ain't going to have me in here looking crazy. But the Bible says God disciplined us. So we can be partakers of his holiness. This is why God, this is what the word of God is for, right? The part you don't like and the part you do like. Oftentimes, right, we come to church and not talking about it by the faith. This is a general statement. It can become very emotional. There's nothing wrong with emotions. There's nothing wrong with emotions. But the purpose for us to come here Sunday after Sunday Wednesday after Wednesday. It's for the word of God. Yes. It's only for the word of God. Because nothing else can transcend time. Nothing else. Nothing else can speak to you but the word of God. Nothing else. So this is the standard that God hold, hold, hold us to, right? Because he holds himself to it. The Bible said he couldn't swear by nothing greater. But his word, this is what the, this is what our scripture tell us. This is the thing that we have found. We've been found guilty of right here. It's, it's all right here in the book. Every, it finds every single one of us, yes. no matter what your sin is. Right. The yes. Apostle Paul said this. He said, listen, and so were some and so were some of you, but you were cleansed, but you were washed, but you were sanctified. Yes. We can never forget what God done in our lives. Amen. When we understand the state that we were in, when we were without God in the world, we can never forget what God done, done in our lives. Lest we become like the servant. This is what this, again, like I can't stress that enough. Oftentimes, you know, we look at people no matter what their lifestyle is. You know, we may disagree with it. You can't write them off. God didn't write me off. Listen, I, I can't speak to everybody in here, but I, I lived a life of sin, okay? It was a life of sin, right? Now, I'm not, not, I'm not proud of it, but it's who I was because I didn't know any better. It was done out of my ignorance, right? Now, 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 this, this, there's, there, it, you know, it wasn't done out of ignorance because I didn't know it was wrong. I'll tell you what type of ignorance it, it was done out of. God know my heart. He'll forgive me. Uh-oh. His grace is sufficient. No, no, sir. No, ma'am. No, no, ma'am. Listen, listen to this. This is this is what the Bible says. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and He will have mercy on him, and to our God, for He will abundantly pardon with your guilty self. Right. See, God is not like our system in America. It's not a bad system. It's just not like God's system. You know, this is the thing. We go to prison ministry. We don't have to. We get some bad, some bad dudes in prison. Straight up. That's just the reality of it. And, and sometimes, right, they do have to pay the debt they owe to society. But even right there in prison, when they truly give their life to Christ, God said, I tell you what, you got a clean slate with me, right? But, right, th 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 there's been times where I've heard people say this statement, oh, they got a jailhouse religion. I'm like, man, that's messed up. No, you, you never know. Sometimes people, when they had their time to sit and to think and to reflect, right? Because at some point, what we call that is maturity. You're coming into maturity. You understand that there was a way you were living that wasn't getting you nowhere. It landed you here. Now, it don't take all of us going to prison to realize that. It doesn't take that for everybody. But there's at some point in our life, we come to the realization that I'm doing it this way and it's just not working. I'm coming to a place of maturity when I can sit down and I can reflect 
on my thoughts, the way I think, the way I navigate through life, and understand that I need a God to deliver me. Amen. That is spiritual maturity, Amen. right? Yes. And so in that, when you get to that place, you will know, I no longer had the mindset, his grace is sufficient. God will forgive me, right? Imagine this. I believe that sometimes we, are, we, we, we forget that in the essence of who we are, we are created in his likeness and in his image. So some of the very basic things that we understand, I believe that they are divine and innately given. I'll tell you what I mean by that. Most of us in here, right? People ain't got too many times to ask us for our, for our forgiveness. And it, we know what the scriptures say, but you don't have too many times to go off on me or treat me any kind of way. Or, or be like, hey, hey, bro, hey, hey, I'm, I'm going to cuss you out real quick. I'm going to utterly disrespect you. But you got grace. You're very sufficient, partner. You got it. That ain't going to happen too many times. That's, that's, that's the reality. But then when it comes to God, what's our mentality? He got the grace. But, 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 listen, the Bible says this. Not the Bible, I'm sorry. I, a definition says this, listen. That God will pardon your sins when what? When we, when we, when, when we ask forgiveness from our heart. Because in the acts of forgiveness, I'm going to turn my heart. I'm going to turn, it, it means it brings about repentance. God cannot forgive a person who does not repent from the heart. And they in their heart have accepted and they justify their own rebellion. How can I forgive you? Now, again, we as people, we understand that. But it's almost as if when we start talking about the most high God, he don't understand that. At the end of the day, the difference between us and the most high God is he knew the intention of the thing before it ever happened. You and I don't know. You and I don't always know the intention. I give you a prime example because I've been guilty of this in my own life. You ever thought highly of someone, like very highly of someone, and they walked in the room and you felt like they should have knew who you were because you knew who they were and you thought highly of them, and then um, they didn't speak to you. You don't know the heart of the matter. This person, mom, is just died. They not studying you, but you judged it too quickly. So what? Uh, they got a problem with me. Uh, no, they not studying you. Their mind is somewhere completely different. It didn't mean no harm by it. That's the difference between us and God. <laughs> I know the intent of it. Do you remember when, when uh, Sarah and uh, uh, Abraham, they had a scheme going. You know, Abraham said, girl, you look good. When we go into the city, tell these people, you're my sister. <laughs> They're like, all right, yeah, 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 yeah. They have a scheme going to get there. The king say, man, that, that, that woman look good. I want her for my wife. He, he took Abraham's wife, not knowing this is Abraham's wife and not his sister. God appeared to the king at night and said, man, listen, brother. You, 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 listen, you, you getting ready to come meet me. <laughs> king wake up in the morning. He say, Abraham, you lied to me, brother. This is not your sister. This is your wife. The Bible says because it was unintentionally done, God forgave him, right? It was unintentional. There's a scripture in Psalms. David says this. He said, God, keep me from my secret faults. Let not my presumptuous sins have dominion over me. The word presumptuous there meaning the things I know wrong. To have the attitude of, oh, God, grace got me. You are presumptuous, presumptuously sinning. The danger in that is this. The more you do it, the more you justify it. The more you justify it, the more your heart becomes darkened and alienated from the life of God, making you unfruitful in the things of God. We got to change our mindset as the people of God. Our standard is the word of God. Everybody not going to agree with it. Everybody not going to like it. Like family and friends, but the standard is the word of God. Listen, 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 just because I disagree with you, don't mean I hate you. Just because I disagree with your lifestyle, I want the best for you. I'll give you an example. I have a friend, and I will consider him my friend. I believe he is. 
One day he came to me, he said, I love my wife and my girlfriend. I say, brother, brother, man. Brother, brother, man, we got to talk. We talked for an hour and 30 minutes. An hour and 30 minutes. We had a, we had a, a good conversation. Not because I'm better than him. Not, not because I want to see him do better. Because I, he, I want you to understand what God says about marriage and his standard of marriage. He talked to me one day. He said, Joshua, thank you for never making me feel bad. I can disagree with you. I can tell you what the scriptures say. Right? And not make you feel little. When I was living a life of sin and I started reading my Bible, for whatever reason, it's because he's God and he's, he knows what he's doing. And we can know, when, when no one else can touch your heart, God knows how to touch your heart. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Even when I didn't like what the word was saying, I just couldn't get enough of it for some reason. Right. He never gave up on me, yes. right? He never threw me away like the trash, All even right. though I deserved it, even though we are guilty of yes. sin. This is why David says in Psalms 51, only against you, God, have I son sinned and did, did this evil. While a person can be the recipient of the sin, it is God who gave the precepts, the statutes, and the commandment. You, we sin against his word. All right, come on. So my message today is we serve a king who will abundantly pardon. Oh, yes. It is our job to extend that same grace to other people. God didn't wake up one day and... Uh, you know, just say, you know, I like Joshua. So, you know, today I'm going to give him grace. Until I came into the full understanding and knowledge of God, while I was in my sin, he winked at my ignorance. Okay. He gave me grace. But I can say this. I, I can speak for everybody. Like, I know he had a timetable on mine because of experiences I went through. Right. And I didn't have to question whether or not it was God getting my attention. Yeah. Right. I can't answer that for you. Or anybody else. The, the, the Bible says, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. That, that is not an emotional thing. That is a thing of understanding. The day you hear my voice, the day you hear my voice. When, 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 one will say, ah, on that great day, one will say, God, when did I hear your voice? When your co-worker Joshua said X, Y, and Z, that was the word of God. That was me trying to get your attention, right? It's in those everyday moments. My experiences, many of my phenomenal experiences with God wasn't in the church setting. True. I can't equate, and I love, I love some worship music. I can't equate it because the music was good. Mm -hmm. But it's because I, I, I understood the state, the spiritual state that I was in, oh, yes. and that I needed God. Mm -hmm. And so now, because God has set me free and delivered me and filled me with his Holy Ghost, I know what my debt, I know the debt I owed. I understand the debt I owed. So then, with that mindset, right, I can extend it to somebody else. You know, we, 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 again, I'm, 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 I'm closing here. We cannot ask the people of God. I, I can say it all day, 10 times on Sunday. We cannot look at down on other people when they live a life that's not pleasing to God. Because God gave us grace. Because God says this, he said, listen, it is that you are saved by grace through faith, and it is not of yourself. It's not yours, there's nothing you can do to deserve it. Because you were found guilty. You were found guilty, and God has forgiven you of your sins. The Bible says, I, I am even he who blot out your transgressions. To blot out means to scrape away. To blot out means, oh, oh, you know, if you had a dry erase board, you know sometimes when you were right on a dry erase board, you would, you would uh, erase it and then the residue or whatever you wrote would be there. So you kind of could see what would be there. Well, God have a permanent eraser. When God wipe out your sins, it's gone. It's, it's no longer there. It's not there anymore. When God wipes them out, it's not there anymore. Be patient to people. Love on people. I'm not telling you to agree with people. That's not what I'm saying. But love, 
speaks to, I can hold you accountable to the word of God. I can still encourage you and still wish the best for you and know and tell you that you're wrong. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I really pray, pray that God bless you today through this encouragement. Amen. Amen. Let's stand for prayer. Amen.
give you today. It doesn't matter what it is or how big it might have seemed to anybody else in the earth realm. Guess what? God is able to save you. So if you haven't given your life to the Lord today, if you seem like you've fallen and you've fallen short, He is able to save you today. So just repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. Come into my life today. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, amen. That's all it takes. And as Minister John says, get in that word because the word is going to help you to stand. So we thank God for each and every one of you online.